because. Okay, so thank you very much to all of the educators, the publishers, and the technologists that are here today. I'm going to give you a snapshot of what we see happening in the U.S. education market and talk a little bit about what we're doing in the Korea market with specific educational devices and how we're bridging the gap from consumer devices to actual learning devices. Okay, so what tools are we going to use uh, in the future to learn? We're, we're already very uh, familiar with a book. Books are great. They don't need uh, power outlets. Uh, they don't need chargers. Uh, and uh, uh, there's something that, that we're, we're used to using. But we know that fundamentally it's inefficient. So how is that going to change? And how is technology going to change uh, your classroom and the learning experience? We already know today that students are using these devices uh, in a leisurely way, and it's not necessarily a part of their curriculum, their academic curriculum. And our goal is really to say, why not? Why aren't these things more integrated? Textbooks are not dead. I think that there are many publishers. How many publishers are in the room? So good. So you would agree that the textbook industry is very much alive. It is really about creating new content channels and creating educational content in formats in which students and teachers and educators want to learn it. Uh, and I'm, what I'm showing you here is actually a dedicated e-reading device that's specifically designed for learning uh, and for, for students. Uh, and you'll see here that there was a lot of governmental support from the Korean government. Um, this is our first educational device that we've launched. And this is uh, uh, something that I think is really important, especially from a publisher perspective, is the tight relationship that Kyobo has with EBS. They're the, uh, uh, one of the number one leading educational content providers. So exclusive content on these devices, which really creates a, and cultivates a learning experience. Very interestingly enough about the Kyobo device is that it is designed as mom's hope. And it's mom's hope because uh, our children today in learning uh, really uh, think of tablets, uh, an interactive tablet, as toys. They want to play Angry Birds, look at video on the internet. And while that's all good and fun, that doesn't help us in learning. So this device, uh, what we look at and bring it to the market is really mom's hope. But it's also dad's hope too, right? In interesting to point out, look at that content mix. A lot of children's books, 72,000 children's books, 870 video lectures. When you look at this device, this device has the ability to browse the internet, which is important, but it does not have all of the games and all of, all of the things that, that uh, 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 children have to deal with when they're dealing with other devices. So what, why did Kyobo come to us for this educational device? Uh, and this is very similar to what we're seeing in the United States, too, with demand for uh, specific educationally purpose-built devices. Is it really, how can you learn everywhere? Learning happens outside and it happens inside. If you have a substrate or a technology that can allow you to see your content indoors and out, that's great. That enables outdoor learning. So that's one of the attributes. Power crisis. So let's imagine that, that you do get a grant, uh, educators get a grant to equip classrooms with tablets for, for learning. Can you imagine in a classroom of 40 having a, uh, power outlet strips and what that would do to the power and the electricity bill? So you really want low power uh, devices uh, and your students should not be scrambling back and forth to charge these devices. These devices really need to be uh, very energy efficient. If a device can give you the look and the feel of paper, that's also another attribute. Oftentimes when we look at our, our mobile devices and we look at tablet technologies, there's a light 
that's being emitted into the eye because of the backlighting technology, right? And there's a perception and a correlation that there's possibly some fatigue that happens as a result of this. And uh, we propose uh, that a reflective surface, how we naturally view uh, paper and uh, devices that have the same reflectance as paper, allow for what we like to call an immersive reading experience, right? Where you are really uh, uh, into the long format content and you're, it's promoting longer reading times. So this is important, uh, we believe, and also an important consideration when we talk to educators about devices that would be appropriate for learning. In the United States, there is a bit of what we are calling a reading revolution. And that goes back to the statement that uh, textbooks are not dead. Reading is very much alive. And as that applies to an educational environment, what we're finding is that the expectation of educators uh, and the expectation of parents uh, in the U.S. market is to have these devices in the classroom and to not have them be something that is used like a toy in, in a leisure environment to really get these devices to the classroom. We also know that there are trends that are fueling this and obviously this is uh, the internet and there's a few points that I want to pull out and highlight to you. In 2019, in the United States, it's estimated that 50% of all classes will be taught online or have a significant part of their curriculum driven by online and connectivity. So that trend of staying uh, connected and having digital technologies in the classroom isn't going away. How many of you have teenagers? Me too. <laughs> they love technology. Texting, talking, right? But not learning, right? So how do we get them to use these devices to actually learn something in, in, in the classroom? And so if we look at it, at, and this is more of a college student, a bit of an older demographic, but I think it's very, very true that Children are, uh, are having uh, devices younger and younger. How many of your children have a mobile device? Yeah, there's quite a few. And, and uh, how about an e-reader? Any e-reader devices? So more and more we're seeing that the, there is an expectation to have this technology with them. And we need to, to, to make it such that these are used for learning. In the United States, of course, this is already um, happening. Uh, you can see here all the statistics that talk of, uh, about uh, how they're interacting with the devices, what they're doing to support their academic environment and their learning. No new surprise there. They're writing, research, taking class notes, making presentations, texting their girlfriend. That was a joke. But as digital textbooks take off, from a publisher standpoint, we know that there's a revenue dwindling, right? And that there's concern. And, and I propose that it really does not have to be that way. There are multiple channels for publishers of educational content to get into the untapped market uh, in the educational environment, also in enterprise and other segments. So when we think about tablets today, we think about uh, tablets that uh, have really only scraped the surface. Uh, what other purposes can be used? And this is what I believe is gonna, it was the opportunity for publishers and really the requirement for educators. So the textbook of the future um, uh, is, is pretty intuitive, uh, it's interactive, it is a, a, a writing uh, on, on the device, maybe handwriting technology, input, uh, output research, all the typical things that we expect uh, to happen, study groups. Uh, and in order to really support all of that multimedia activity, we know that the trend is to really use devices that sip power and not guzzle it right, because of the, the 
green factor, and there's an energy draw. And so I'll just draw your eye just very briefly to what the advantages of using devices with different component technology that have an impact. Uh, and, and very briefly, we'll mention that uh, Mirasol is up one milliwatt of power, or uh, two milliwatt of power, depending on the use model, versus uh, uh, LCD technologies, uh, which you can't see outside. And then, of course, electrophoretic devices, e-ink devices, uh, great technology, but we learn in color. And we also learn in video, and we learn in multimedia, and our children will. And so these are some indicators of what those devices may look like in the future. Uh, you may be aware that in uh, uh, Taiwan, Qualcomm has a, a fabrication facility. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and in the very short future, later this year, we'll uh, complete this lovely facility uh, in Long Tan. And I would say that Taiwan, with its incredible, savvy, educated workforce that's making this technology come to pass, is really poised to be a leader in the digital education reader space. And so I'm, I'm pleased to be able to talk with you about these concepts. I'm sure a lot of this isn't new information, but it really is a reminder of how important we believe the Taiwan market is to overall global education with these devices. And I'll leave you with a very academic thought, a theory, right? Punctuated equilibrium. This states that the, uh, the theory does not happen in a straight line, right? Uh, evolution doesn't happen in a straight line. And then, and I'll just highlight here in the bottom that change is here. It's driven by technology, and the arrival of ebooks and digitization of print must must happen with the consistency among educators and publishers. And that time is really now. So if I could leave you with that thought that there are multiple opportunities, uh, Taiwan is a leader in this space, uh, and just to share with you that I'm pleased to be able to talk with you about that, uh, but that the time is now for us to act and to equip our children with devices that will help them learn. Tishy.